G'day all, and in this video I'll be showing you how I do this little uh, overlay up the top here in a bunch of the games that you'll see on my YouTube video. Uh, a, uh, a a viewer sent a comment uh, to one of my videos asking me how I do this. Funnily enough, uh, it was just before Jay's Two Cents just his, did his video recently, um, so I'm not copying Jay's video or anything, um, but uh, I did decide that since Jay already has a, a great video on how to do it, uh, I thought I'd make it a little different, and rather than showing you sort of the, the, the in the same way how he does it, um, I'd show you how I do mine, because mine's a little bit more customised in the view, so you'll notice you know, it doesn't look like Jay's, but the thing is, Jay and I actually use the exact same programs to do it, uh, it's just that mine is a little bit more customised to, to look the way I want it to look. So so what I'm talking about is this little uh, info thing up the top here that you'll see on top of Battlefield 4, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll show you how that works. So the first thing is you'll need Afterburner. Pretty easy to get, just type in MSI Afterburner in your chosen search engine, and it should be up the top, but if it's not, just look for the one that's in MSI, MSI's website. Uh, and also so that you know, this works for all graphics cards, not just MSI cards. Um, so any graphics card you've got, this will work with, and uh, just click Download Afterburner. And uh, once you've got Afterburner, and you've installed it and run it, uh, it should be easy to find. Anytime you need it, it should be in your task tray here. And you can just single click it, and up it pops. Now my interface looks a bit different. I've got a custom skin running on mine, um, but that's not really the important part, because my video is a bit different to Jay's. So all you need to know is find the Settings button here. Um, it might be located differently depending on the skin you're using, but this settings button is how we're going to access the monitoring part. Now this will be in two parts since we've got, uh, well not this video, but the, uh, the, there are two parts to this. There's the part in MSI Afterburner and there's the part in Ruby Tuner that we'll get to later on in this video. So once you find this settings button, you want to click on monitoring. And from monitoring, you can see here the different uh, things that you can monitor. Um, so on the very left, uh, the tick that's filled in represents what is being monitored. So as you can see in mine, we've got CPU usage, you can see up here, CPU clock, which you can see there, CPU temperature, which you can see there, and RAM usage, which I've added to the CPU stack there. And then for GPU, we've got GPU usage, which I sometimes swap with power percentage, core clock, GPU temperature, and memory usage, which is the GPU's memory. And I'll get to the uh, the other one down the bottom there in a minute, the frame rate, because I don't do that the same as Jay. So, you select the ones you want to monitor, and uh, for each one you want to enable on-screen display. That's a little checkbox here. And if it doesn't have the checkbox, it's not going to display. If it does have the checkbox, it will display, and it'll even tell you they're in OSD. So I have four for each, so that's one, two, three, four for CPU, one, two, three, four for GPU, and I've just, the RAM is part of CPU stats, just to clean it up, I don't want to have a third row there. Uh, or third, uh, yeah, third row. Uh, so, so that's how that works, nice and easy. Now, how I get the colours like this, you see, you notice how they're not the orange and, and whatever other green and all that sort of stuff. Uh, this is nice and out of the way and, and subtle, uh, so it's not sort of distracting you while you're playing, but you can still check if you need. How I do that is uh, from this, next to the on-screen display thing, make sure it's set to text, which they should all be. Um, but if they're not, you know, you can select text for each one and uh, click this little three dot button. That will bring up this. You can ignore all of it, um, just make sure you're on modern, and ignore the rest of it. You only need the ones in this colors library section. Um, so if I change uh, colors one, say to red, and click apply, you'll notice that the, uh, the group changed. Uh, and I think the other one is group four. So they'll be a bit different, like not all of the, the colors are used. I think it's group four is, uh, Oh, I have to click apply, is for that one, yep. Uh, and the other two just aren't used for some reason. Um, so if, at least for mine, yours may be slightly different, you may have different groups or whatever, I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but that's how that part works. Um, so um, I'll set that back to how I had it. Actually, I think I had that on uh, 210. And uh, we'll change that one to 210. So it's a bit of an off-white colour, and uh, system colour zero down there is for all of the rest of them. So if I uh, change that to red, you'll see that all of the uh, actual values will change to red. So I have that to 128, 128, and 128, and that will uh, give it that greyish colour. 
So that's how that works. Now, the other thing too is how do I get them in the, the two columns like this? Well, that's quite simple. So you can see CPU usage there, you override group name, and you type in whatever you want. So in my case, I type in the name of my CPU so that all of you know what I'm using without me having to state it or without you having to ask. You can just look up there and see it. And I copy and paste it uh, to each one. So if I override these, or don't override them, so if I put them back to their defaults, you'll see they'll all say CPU except RAM, which will say RAM. So when I apply, I get this weird extra column with only one thing in it. And it's not very neat, um, and I like things to be neat. So what I do instead is override group name, paste in what I want, and uh, you'll see that they all line up then nicely. Um, and then for RAM, just because you know RAM isn't the CPU, but it is you know close enough that uh, it, it's just much neater. And you know what it is anyway. It doesn't doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, and then I just do the same thing for um, the GPU as well. So, And by the way, um, the spaces at the end, so you'll notice how here there's a bunch of spaces at the end. The reason for those spaces is to line it up here because it's you know shorter. Uh, it just lines everything up nicely to have a few extra spaces. You can mess around with that as you please when you get around to that. Uh, and anyway, yeah, so the same, same thing applies to this, um, but there's only one space because I was lining it up. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's the basics of, of the monitoring part. Uh, and uh, also, uh, like I mentioned before, sometimes I swap power percent for GPU usage, so I'll enable the on-screen display for that. So I'm always monitoring, but I just enable on-screen display for that, disable it for this, oops, oops uh, disable it for that, click apply, and now I've swapped uh, GPU usage for power percent. Depending on what I'm doing, usually benchmarks I'm using power percent, and then if I'm just general gaming, I'll use GPU usage. Um, for most of you, GPU usage is probably going to be more useful, um, but uh, it's totally up to you. And you can adjust, and you, know, you can use whatever stats you want. These, you don't have to copy what I've done, um, but this is just what I do. Um, and same here, is sometimes I use frame time, uh, it can be useful, but uh, not very often. So you can see there, I've, I've already got some settings set up for frame time. I won't go into that too much because it's really not that useful for anything other than than when I'm setting things up and that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to know more about that you can ask, but that's an example of where I'm using graph rather than text. Um, so yeah, that's something, if, if you want to know more about that, feel free to ask and I'll maybe I'll make another video or something like that uh, in more depth. But I think Jay has some, some pretty good videos that he just came out with uh, about MSI Afterburner and Rebutuna. So uh, I definitely recommend going and watching those too. Um, but this video is more specifically about how I get this style, this look. So that's the first part of it, um, but you'll, you, if you've done this already, you'll notice that it won't look like this yet, and that is because we need to go to the, the next stage, so so that's that part. Um, and uh, this this menu here, this on-screen display thing, this is where you can toggle it if you want, so you can set, again, this is in Jay's video already, you can set a toggle, I don't because I have this all enabled all the time anyway, um, but you could set a toggle if you wanted to, to toggle it, um, So so we're done with that. Now the next stage is uh, 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 Rebutuna. So once you've launched Afterburner, Rebutuna will also launch with it. And uh, you can sort of launch Rebutuna pretty easily, just a single click on it uh, from the task tray. And, uh, and then from here, I recommend you don't use global because that will mean that your settings here will apply to all games. Um, I like to create an individual profile for each and I'll explain why uh, later on. Um, so you just add a profile and you search for your game, so in this case Battlefield 4, um, and uh, you select your main executable for the game. So the executable for the game usually won't be a launcher, it'll be what's launched after launcher. Um, there are ways to check on that, um, let me know in the comments if you need help with that, I, I could always make another video about how, how to find which, which uh, executable is the correct one, and so maybe tips and tricks on how to do that. But I think for most of you, you, you should be able to figure it out. Um, but if not, do let me know, um, and I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll make another video or something along those lines. Um, but anyway, so in this case it's Battlefield 4, uh, I don't need to open, I've already got a profile for it, but uh, let's go through the settings for that. So I start it with Windows, and I show the on-screen display because you want to show it. Uh, if you turn that off, it'll universally turn on on-screen display off for all of these profiles. Um, and, uh, and also make sure MSI Afterburner is automatically starting as well, um, so that you can sort of not have to launch it manually unless you want to. Um, the app detection level... Um, Jay recommends high, but I've always used medium, and I don't really have an issue with it. Um, stealth mode uh, depends. Multiplayer games can be a little bit funny with um, on-screen displays because of anti-cheat. So usually I just enable it anyway. I've never had any problems with it being on, so I just enable it. 
Uh, frame rate limit is something that you can choose to use or not. I only use it because uh, certain games I want to be capped at my monitor's frame rate. In this case, Battlefield 4, you can see it runs at smooth 144. Um, it would run at much higher frame rate if I changed that, but of course I don't need it to run any higher because my uh, monitor limit is 144 anyway. Uh, so you can choose to use that or not, but one thing I do like about this is that rather than doing it in-game, this enforces that. Um, so this can be a little bit more reliable than the in-game frame rate limits. Uh, On-screen display to support, make, support, make sure that's on. I use Vector 3D for my rendering mode, which gives it this style. Um, you want it in the viewport, which I think is already default. I don't use a shadow, but I do use uh, on-screen display fill. And then when you want to change the fill color, you go down to this furthest one on the right here, where it says fill color. And uh, I find it a little bit weird sometimes, so I just select a random color, then go back to the color on, which is usually black. Select my uh, transparency or opacity level, which for me is 64, but I have to use the arrow keys because it always skips 64. It'll be 63 or 65. So yeah, 64 is what I use for that. Click OK. Uh, then you can select the on-screen zoom level, so you can choose whether you want it to be large or whether you want it to be small or somewhere in between. And then we get to the, the reason why I don't do this the same way Jay does it, which Jay's way is perfectly valid, um, but I prefer this because it means that I can have my frame rate per profile, so that means per game. So if you enable frame rate in MSI Afterburners monitoring tools, it means that all of these profiles will show the frame rate. And there are some games where I don't need to show the frame rate because I might have a different way of showing frame rate or I might just not want it. Um, so as an example, my Modern Warfare profile, if you've seen those videos, uh, it doesn't show frame rate. Uh, it's got the frame rate is from the game's built-in frame rate display. Uh, and so it would be shown twice if I had done it in MSI Afterburner, or if I chose not to display it, I wouldn't be able to display it at all in any games. So that's why I use Show in Statistics, because all the, the only thing Show in Statistics does, if I turn it off and back on, you'll see that it just enables or disables the uh, frame rate display. And I find that really handy, because it means for some games like Battlefield 4, I can have it enabled, and for games like uh, you know, Modern Warfare, I can have it disabled. Um, and so that means that per game, I can choose whether I want the... Uh, frame rate to display or not. So that's useful for me. The other thing too is the position. Uh, and Jay mentioned that you can you know, move it around, uh, which is great. You can you know, move it to wherever you want. You can choose whichever corner you want to move it from uh, and that sort of thing. And that's, that's, all, that's all very handy. But I find sometimes though um, you want to move it to the center of the screen, which you know, if you notice it doesn't quite go all the way, you, know, you can hit the edge of your screen. Now you could you know, move it further and, and do it this way, but it's a little bit less accurate and I don't know. The way I like to do it is, um, so I'll show you my Modern Warfare profile. You can see that it's got 721 and I've you know, got it exactly to where I want it. Um, so if I, if I show you what happens if I just click on that, then I can change the value myself. So I can go 721, hit enter, and now it's exactly in that position. And then you can you know, adjust it, fine tune it if you want, if you want to fine tune exactly where it is. Uh, and that's that's how that works. So that's handy to know uh, that you can also do it this way. Um, now that's pretty much it. Um, there there may have been something I've missed, but uh, I think for the most part this is pretty much it. Um, as you can see, I've got a bunch of profiles for for different games, and they've all got different settings. Um, so sometimes you have to mess around a little bit with it, but for the most part they're all pretty much the same. Um, but I do like this show in statistics. That's the thing that mainly differs between Jay's video and mine is the show in statistics part and also the part where you can change uh, the uh, on-screen display colors to actually adjust, you know, like how the system color is zero. Uh, I can make it a gray and then I can change, you know, color one and four or in your case it might be all, all four of them or whatever. You can change these to different colors to, to make the uh, the type, the things different colors. Uh, and the other part that was a bit different was this override group name part that he didn't mention that uh, I actually use and to make everything very neat uh, and it, it works really well. Um, so yeah that's that's a, a basic overview of exactly how I do mine in this style. Uh, you can do your similar or different uh, however you like um, and I, uh, I hope this helps and uh, thanks to the viewer that uh, made the comment to ask because I'd never thought to make a video about it. Um, kind of funny the timing that, that uh, Jay uh, decided to also make a video about the almost exact same thing uh, at almost the exact same time. I thought that was kind of funny because I, I sort of saw the video pop up in my feed and went, oh, okay, he's, uh, he's basically answered the question for me. And then I thought, well, actually, this is a good opportunity to rather than just show a generic video about how to use it, I'd show a video of exactly how I get this style uh, and get it nice and clean and neat and out of the way 
uh, and a little bit more subtle than uh, than the way that Jay has it. Um, so you know, Jay's is great for benchmarking and stuff, um, but I like to have everything nice and neat and clean. I can still read it very clearly, and um, yeah, and it works great for just everyday gaming. It means that you know it's not something you're enabling uh, only when you're benchmarking or checking settings. This is something that I literally use. Like this isn't just the videos that I upload. Uh, that you guys see, uh, even for videos I don't upload, if I'm just casually gaming, uh, I have this up all the time. People in the past have called it out as being a gimmick to be able to see stats and things, but I disagree. I actually find it useful. Uh, you can detect a problem instantly, uh, and, you know, and it's good to monitor your attempts and that sort of thing. So, but uh, but anyway, so that that's uh, an overview of uh, how that all works, and I uh, I hope it was helpful. See you in the next video.